the year began with what felt like a fractured relationship from Draymond and Jordan Poole's preseason mano y mano. Um, and it felt like Draymond like took a step back in stature, in what he meant in that room, and the Warriors can never be the Golden State Warriors without Draymond Green having like a fire-breathing dragon type of presence. And he's getting that back right now. And he's starting to, I think, find himself and his voice again. And there is no coincidence that Draymond is thrilled with the way things are going and things are starting to go well all at the same time. As a matter of fact, last night, he... He had one of his more interesting post-game press conferences of the entire year, I thought. And I want to kind of go through a statement that Grandy has lovingly sliced up in one, two, three, four different little sound bites to us to, to, to sort of pick through. And we'll just start with Draymond's sort of opening statement about how game plans are being received by this team, and they're excited about them, and they like to go out and execute them. That first game out the break was tough. We didn't really guard anyone. But since then, we're, we're really checking. And most importantly, like I said last game, starting to see a little more game planning. And with that, you know, you want to see guys execute that game plan uh, just so you know that you're capable. You know, overall, I think guys have been doing a really good job these last few games of executing game plans, and it's been putting us in a good position to win. Feels like Steve is absolutely saying, hey, guys, this is a serious moment in time here. You know, we, we, we don't have any more games to throw away for any reasons. We can't. We are all out of our mulligans. So we got to play. We are going to install serious, we've considered, best way to win this game plan. And I need you guys to go out and execute it. And the team has bought into that. It, it, like Draymond's just telling you, that's what's happening. Yeah, I I take a little issue with what he said because I think they've they've had defensive game plans the entire year. And sure they have, but they haven't had urgency behind them. Well, but the urgency comes from players. I, I it, it almost right. sounded like he was saying the coaches are doing something different than they were doing before, and I'm not sure that's true. I think they've been giving them their best game plans, game in and game out, but the players are embracing them now because the urgency is, they now feel the urgency themselves. Right, well, like I was saying last segment, it's a lot easier to talk about basketball than it is to go out and execute what people are talking about. And Steve Kerr, I'm sure, has talked the right things and highlighted the right, you know, uh, tendencies that you know, that that make a good game plan. And he's been doing that all year long. The question is, is the team picking up what he's putting down? They are now, and Steve feels that buy-in and that buy-in specifically from Draymond. So once that box and one worked so well against Dame Lillard, Steve was sliding into those DMs, making sure Draymond knew he was happy with what he was seeing because, again, a little a little verbal reward goes an awful long way. Again, what do you give a guy who's a millionaire? Nothing. Give him a compliment. That's how you get him to buy in, and Steve's doing that. Coach texted me last night, and he, or yesterday. He sent me a text like, man, you were great last night. And then he, he hinted at that would be the game plan. And so I'm like, ah. Okay, like, this would be interesting. And then we went through it this morning and shoot around and try to get everybody to grasp the concept. You know, it's very easy to, um, and we did it a few times, it's very easy when a guy is sagging off like that, when a guy catches you, you just rotate to him, you know, and we didn't want to do that. And I think, you know, the game plan worked for us tonight. Again, Draymond, he's invested. He's executing game plans. So I'm going to go ahead and tease tomorrow night's game plan. Draymond just said, ooh, that's interesting. So his ears go up. The entire locker room, I think, gets excited when they know Draymond's excited about a defensive game plan. When Draymond's got a level of personal investment in it, he, I, I think that becomes infectious. I really do. I think it becomes infectious on the team. And it, it just lends to further buy-in and focus for a team whose focus is been legitimately questioned throughout the year yeah i don't think he's i i guess where i'm i'm missing something here is that i think he's been focused on essentially every defensive game plan because that's his bread and butter and he's been a great defensive player all year long he's been good draymond's having think, a really I, good year yeah i think the buy-in 
is coming from guys who either couldn't grasp the concepts before or didn't fully understand what it meant to show that you grasp the concepts. And I'm not just thinking about Jordan Poole, who catches a lot of grief for that, but I'm thinking about most of those other guys. Because up until now, they've been, they haven't been horrible defensively night in and night out, but you couldn't trust them. I think now, and maybe it's the urgency, maybe that maybe it's the fact that the light bulb all went on at, at the same time, but this is a team-wide comprehension. I don't think Draymond Green ever had any problem comprehending the value of defense. No. But you can't be a good defensive team if you only have one or two guys playing proper defense. It's got to be team-wide, and it can't slip. And even, and even last night, they weren't defending greatly in the first half. It was the second half when they just shut everybody down. There were a lot of open looks that were just clank city there. So, yeah, they, they did get a little lucky along the way, and you have to in an NBA game. Nobody plays defense for 48 minutes in this yeah, league. Nobody. But, so, you know, as some of this is, yeah, all of a sudden the light went on, but it's still kind of intermittent, which is why I, I think the litmus test will be able to tell what color it is in two weeks because right. then they'll be away from home. What I like about Draymond is Draymond's game is, I mean, I, I would say that Draymond plays a brutal game. And I mean that in a complimentary way. He is a very physical, emotional type of player. And when he gets to then add an element of skullduggery or psychological warfare, that's when I think he really gets turned on as a basketball player. And that's what they rolled out last night against Russell Westbrook. The sag off of Westbrook was one of the more devastating on-court defensive choices i've seen executed they dared a guy to shoot and then there's that like that there's daring someone to do something and then there's what we saw last night it, it was embarrassing and russell westbrook to your credit right he only took five threes he realized like i am whatever they're doing against me to get in my head has officially worked because Kevin Durant begging him to stop shooting wasn't enough to get Russell Westbrook to stop shooting. But uh, I, I've always heard Ray. Uh, I, have you ever been to Japan? No. I've never been to Japan either. It's one of the places I absolutely want to go in my life. I think the, 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 the place just looks fascinating to me, like the whole city of Japan. It's like the whole thing is Times Square. you know. So I'd like to see that. And I've always been like just fascinating, fascinated with Japanese culture. Do you know how they end bar fights in Japan? Do tell. The entire bar basically stops drinking, stops talking, put down their drink, and just starts staring. It's like you're shamed into into you're you're creating this scene. You wanted attention. All right. Well, here's the entire bar basically looking at you now. Are you happy? Are you satisfied? Can you shut up and stop disturbing the room now? It's like, uh, um, you know, I've, I've always said, if you, want, if you really hate a show, let's say you hate Damon and Ratto. Every single time you tell us about it, we win. Every single time you're paying attention to us to let us know how much you hate us, we have won that moment, that day, that fight, that battle. The most devastating thing you can do is ignore something. And they basically ignore the disturbance by focusing on it. You know, like they, they shame you into stopping. And that to me is like, it's just, it's, it's fascinating. Because you feel everybody looking on you. And all eyes are on you. And that gets embarrassing. And that's what they did to Russell Westbrook. They made all eyes focus on him. There you are, alone. Not a defender within 15 feet of you in any direction. Are you going to shoot an open gym practice three? No, you're not. We win. That's it. I mean, like, you win when the other guy is afraid to take a practice jump shot. It was very reminiscent of what they did with Tony Allen in the playoffs in 2015. Yeah. Which was basically... We know you're not a good shooter, and we know you don't like to shoot. So we're not going to guard you. And it wasn't about shaming him. It was about, we want you to shoot. Please shoot more. It's a percentage play. Yeah. And 
to Tony Allen's credit, he didn't fall for the trap. I mean, it's they the the Grizzlies did not lose that series because Tony Allen wasn't shooting enough. It was just they recognized the weakness and they they operated on it. Exploited. And that's what they did last night. This wasn't about shaming Russell Westbrook. It was okay, you're a low percentage shooter. We want you guys to take the low percentage play. Having said all that, I think there is a rare element of empathy that you're about to hear in Draymond, and he might have seen a little of that game plan in himself. Oh, by the way, welcome to your 4 o'clock hour. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco. Always live on Twitch, YouTube, and the free Odyssey app. Damn well better be free. Westbrook was turning down open gym practice jumpers. It's the most please shoot the ball invitation I've seen on an NBA court. He refused to accept the invitation, and then you're in your own head. You're absolutely in your own head. The Warriors held the entire Clipper team to a lousy shooting night. Kawhi only attempted 12 shots. Paul George was just stepping into lazy three-pointers. You know, just not even trying, just just didn't want to fight around screens and just took lazy three-pointers. But obviously what happened to Russell Westbrook last night is what all the shows are talking about today, and it's what Draymond Green talked about and how much it gets into your head when you are undefended. I think when you have a game plan like that, even more so, you know, I know um, everyone will always judge Russ' jump shot, but what that does to you mentally is tough. You know, it was more so the mental than his shot. He's been shooting the ball well. I think he's shooting a three, like at 33 or 34%. But mentally, that can get tough. And so I thought, um, I thought, you know, we did a good job of sticking with the game plan, and we was able to muck it up on on the defensive side, and it it ended up working out for us. And look, Draymond's a killer. Like he's going to do whatever he can to rob a player of his confidence, whether it's chirping or hacking or playing or whatever. You know, Draymond will do whatever he needs to do. To rob a player of confidence. That's War Daddy Draymond. But I really thought that he sees himself in that Westbrook problem. Because what Golden State Warrior is more sagged off with an invitation to shoot than Draymond Green himself? And I really think that you could almost hear a little bit of empathy when Draymond said this. It'll make you think, for sure. Um... Because you're open every play, and you're taught in basketball, you're open, take the shot. But if you're open every play, you kind of start questioning yourself. And so I thought, uh, I thought we did a good job executing. Didn't you? Didn't you hear a little empathy in that? Like a, just a, a touch there. I think he sees himself in the problem. Um, maybe. Yeah, I, dwelling inside his head is not something I'm good at. Well, there's a podcast but, for you if you want to really get in there. Okay, I'll, I'll dive on it. But I think he was speaking more as a clinical defensive specialist, which is you let the guy who doesn't trust his shot shoot. I mean, it's 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 almost like uh, you, you put your head under the hood of your car and you see a mechanical problem in front of you. So what are you going to do about the problem? The problem is how do you make the Clippers go away from the things they have best, which are Paul George, Eric Gordon, Kawhi Leonard. Guard them. Let the guys you want to shoot, shoot. And I think that's what this was last night. And whatever empathy Draymond Green has or doesn't have for Russell Westbrook, what I sensed more was the kind of admiration that he had for a game plan that worked really well in the same way that that game plan worked so well against Memphis all that time ago. Yeah, no, defense turns him on. Yeah, defense turns him on and... The idea that you're going to say, you know what, we can take the things you guys do well away from you, and then we defy you to beat us with the stuff you don't do well. I, I think that I, I sensed more sort of satisfaction of a craftsman than I did sort of personal empathy. But he did resist the opportunity to say something nasty about Westbrook because you don't gain anything by that. Right. And I remember in 15... They made a point not to really talk about what they were doing with Allen. If you noticed it, good, that was on you. But they didn't rub his face in it. They never said anything about, 
you know, oh, we're leaving him alone because he can't he can't shoot. They just let they just let it go on, and it never changed. And Memphis never pulled out of a series that they were ahead two one. A lot of people are looking for the answer to the question: How are the Warriors putting together a four game winning streak without two of their best players, Curry or Wiggins? And it's because I think they're getting help from one guy who's you know they 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 were counting on to have a a a step forward year, and he's officially now stepping forward, and that's Jonathan Kaminga. Kaminga has got some dog in him, man. He he truly does. I, I I am liking what he's doing for the Warriors more on a nightly basis than I have over. I mean, consistently, every time he's taking the court, he's making something happen. He's either doing it defensively, he's taking care of the offensive opportunities that he gets presented. Last night, he is nineteen. He's plus nineteen. In 29 minutes, he was 3 of 4 from 3. I mean, if Kaminga is getting fat from downtown, you know you got problems on your hands. Seven rebounds, a couple assists, a couple of steals, a block, only two turnovers, so he wasn't sloppy with the ball. Steve Kerr is noticing these things and saying this is the best stretch of the young man's career. I think it was one of his best games that he's played uh, here in his young career. He played with good energy. He uh, he attacked when he you know should have shot when he should have. I mean, it just there's a better a sense of uh, feeling the game offensively, and then just competed uh, defensively. And, and um, you know, Kawhi is such a tough matchup, but I mean, the reason J.K. is here is because um, he has that amazing you know physical gift of just being strong and and athletic and and long arms, and he's learning you know how to use that gift he was running through just guys hacking him on the way to the rim last night on the way to the free throw line for and ones i mean he was he was taking contact he was making contact that was a big boy basketball game from jonathan Kaminga last night yeah the, well the stuff that stood out for me was the way that he didn't let leonard get comfortable he was eight for 12 but you never got the sense that he was going to take the game over Twelve um, shots means Kawhi Leonard's not playing well. Well, it means that you know that he's being defended. Yeah, um, making him work for everything. Yeah, I mean, you know, Clay did a good job on Leonard last night. Yeah. Oh no, they they both did. And I, the thing that I took away from that is that Kerr is now going to become increasingly comfortable in the postseason, giving Kaminga some spell on the best player the other team's got. If it's if if it's not a guard. Um, I don't know that that's a thing that they can do long term. I wouldn't put him on Luca, for example, but I think it gives them an option that they didn't have earlier in the year because the things he could do, he didn't do them consistently enough to become trustworthy. And I think that's always been sort of the underlying issue with this team is that you can't trust them from night to night. Again, you know, this is four games against beatable opponents at home, but the Warriors looked trustworthy. And that's that's the thing that separates them from other good teams. Is that you know what you're gonna get when they're doing when they're playing like this. Dante DiVincenzo, I thought, played very well last night, especially defensively. He's an on ball defender. This team could use as many on ball defenders as they can get. And again, it's Ragu, it's Kaminga. It's Clay Thompson trying his hardest to be the defensive Clay Thompson of yore. Uh, and he's rounding that corner. I mean, he is getting faster. His feet, his legs, it's all moving better. There's no doubt he's moving better on the court this week than he was, you know, just a few weeks ago. And a few weeks ago, he's in February and he's having one of the best scoring months of his entire career. So it really feels like it's coming together from Clay. He's embraced that leadership role. You got Draymond refinding his leadership role. You got Kaminga finally being a trusted agent. You, you got, you know, DiVincenzo playing himself into that role. Steph Curry is coming back. Things are starting to feel better. Hopefully, everything's going well in Casa de Wiggins, and he returns soon too. And this team can start getting into the business of really defending an NBA championship. They had had spells this year where even remembering them as NBA champions was hard to do. Yeah, they're the defending champs. Doesn't look like it now, but they are the defending champs. And for the first time, the last two weeks of basketball have kind of suggested they might 
be capable of defending this title. I mean, it's 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 a long way to go. I mean, there's a lot of boxes to tick off between now and then. But the start of the list is starting to look good right now, and they are ticking the most important box, and that box says defense.